Welcome to week three of our course. And I wanted to review a few things and encourage you to look ahead at some of the assignments that are coming up. Start to plan and prepare so you're not caught off guard. First of all, don't neglect your required reading. This week, it's chapters three and four in the Miller textbook, and there'll be information from all of the required readings on the first test, so you wanna make sure you're completing those. Now, one of the things that I wanted to address this week is your threaded discussions. What I've tried to do in, in listing the instructions for these is to encourage you to demonstrate what I consider collegiate level work. And this means responding to all of the questions and the prompts using complete and thoughtful sentences. And once again, incomplete and thoughtful sentences. You should look at the threaded discussions not only as an actual discussion, but as an academic assignment as well. And not something just to quickly and briefly throw together without much thinking, um, just write something down so you can say that you completed the assignment. That's not what they're really there for. You don't need to upload a document with your response. You only need to type your response in the field provided. But I want you to think about what you're communicating through these threaded discussions and respond thoroughly. The same should be true with your responses to classmates. Remember, this is a discussion. You can't have a discussion if you're not responding and sharing your thoughts. So I may revise these in the weeks to come just to encourage you to uh, do quality work, um, make them a little bit more lengthy, a little bit more meaty, provide a little bit more thought behind your responses. So don't neglect the importance of those. Another thing to address is your responses to the chapter review questions. Read the instructions for these. They are the same for all the chapter review questions. They state in your own words, that's in bold, that's highlighted. Respond to the following questions using well thought, comprehensive and thorough responses. Cite the textbook and that's in text citations, as well as put them in on a reference page. Not only is it simple to follow these directions, this is basic quality writing expectations. It's not difficult to identify the answers to the questions in the textbook. They're pretty straightforward, they're pretty clear, but I want you to get into the habit of summarizing what you have read, rather than just copying from the textbook, which by the way, is plagiarizing, especially if you're not quoting the material and you're not citing it correctly. All of the course material, whether written or in a video, has been posted there for a reason. I know um, some of you have not reviewed all the material. You just kind of go through and complete the assignments. Avoid having points deducted unnecessarily and just be sure you follow all the directions and all the instructions posted. And that goes for the chapter review questions as well as any other assignment. Now, the first test is coming up next week, so begin to plan for that. First test is going to cover all of the information from your required readings, PowerPoints that have been posted, as well as any lecture presentation material. Now, the test will be open on Monday with the new weekly module, and it will close on Sunday. For online courses, I'm pretty strict with the guidelines and the expectations with the test, so be sure you plan for it and set aside some time for it. The test is going to be timed. You'll have 90 minutes to complete the first test, which in my opinion is probably more time than you'll actually need. But if you're not prepared, you may find yourself running out of time trying to locate the content to help you answer the questions. The test is going to be made up of multiple choice and possibly some short response questions. So it's important that when you begin the test, you access a reliable Wi-Fi connection. If you go to your local Starbucks or some other location, for example, and you get disconnected for some reason, you will not be able to continue the test when you're reconnected. Moodle will automatically give you a zero for your score if for some reason you get disconnected. Now, if you're taking the test and something happens, let me know immediately. Text me, email me, call me, or all of the above. Because Moodle does record all keystrokes, so if something happens, I can check into it. Um, access the Moodle log and identify what happened and hopefully correct it. This is also good because, you know, sometimes, and I'm not saying this is anyone in our class, but once in a while, someone will have a quote unquote problem with their internet and for some reason state that they can't access Moodle. Um, they can't post an assignment or complete a test. It happens, right? Well, like I said, I can check the Moodle access log and identify what the problem could be when you logged in or when you attempted to upload something. So plan ahead. Set aside some uninterrupted time when you prepare for the test. It's important to do that. And lastly, take a look ahead and begin to plan for the assignments that are coming up. In a couple of weeks, you'll need to have your research proposal project, um, the initial topic due. And this can be any topic related to physical education, instruction, and learning. Think about an area of interest that you may have. Uh, it does help if you develop a research topic around something you feel passionate about. You'll use this topic to develop your research proposal, which is not the same as a research paper. Let's say, for example, you wanted to investigate co-educational PE classes. Now, quick note, 
don't do this because this topic has been over investigated. There's a lot of information on it. Um, and quite frankly, I'm kind of tired of reading information on co-educational PE classes. So I'm not going to approve this as a topic if you choose it. But for example, if you did, if you were interested in this, you'll formulate a question that relates to that topic. So for example, a question could be, do students learn better in co-educational PE classes rather than in single gender classes? This would be an example of your topic and question to develop. So the following weeks after this, you'll build on this research proposal until you have the completed assignment. So begin to think about some areas of physical education that you may have some interest in and develop a realistic, authentic and researchable topic. Spend a little bit of time each week working on class assignments and try not to put things off until the weekend. This is inevitably setting you up for failure. But if there are any questions, if there are any concerns, anything you need, please do not hesitate to contact me. That'll be it for now.